What is going on YouTube? I am Lamont at Large. Today I am at the Hope Memory Garden Cemetery here in Hope, Arkansas. Rachel was such a vibrant person, so beautiful with a smile that could light up any room. She had such a love of life, an easygoing spirit that opened the door for many. I know she will be missed because I know she was loved by many. My prayers and sympathy go out to her family and friends. May you have peace in knowing that God holds her in his heavenly arms. This is Jose Jaime Dominguez, November 10th, 1987 to April 16th, 2017. Jose was at, I believe his home and a fight had broke out. And when he tried to stop it, somebody took out a knife and stabbed him multiple times. Uh, when the ambulance was called, he was found uh, laying in the street and then he was taken to the hospital. Uh, where he later died of his injuries. He left behind four little kids, small children. This here is the grave of Vincent Walker Foster, January 15th, 1945 to July 20th, 1993. Uh, Vince Foster was a very prominent attorney here in Arkansas. And if you were into politics during those times when Bill Clinton was the president of the United States, then you know that this man, Vince Foster, was a very, very good friend of Bill Clinton. They grew up together here in Hope, Hope Arkansas. And uh, he served as the deputy White House counsel uh, for the first six months of the Clinton administration. Uh, but those uh, six months were very uh, tumultuous, to say the least. Uh, you had, of course, a new administration coming in. And already uh, one of the uh, bigger scandals uh, was the Travelgate scandal. I, I can break that down as quickly as I can. So you have a travel office for the White House and uh, people that work for the travel office. Uh, basically, when a new president comes in, a new administration, those people usually keep their jobs. So they've served, you know, worked for the White House through the travel office for, you know, decades. So when the Clintons came in, um, seven people, I believe, were fired from the travel office and <laughs> they were replaced by their friends. You know, Clinton friends, Clinton cronies, whatever. And the media picked up on this and... That was the uh, first uh, scandal to, to rock the White House. Uh, you had Wall Street Journal. You had CNN uh, writing exposés, uh, questioning the president. And it's so weird to even hear myself say the Wall Street Journal and CNN going after a Democratic president. But back in the day, they used to be an actual news organization so they dealt with all of that and vincent foster was privy to the clinton's tax returns and of course they're very good friends not saying he was a tax attorney but he had access to those records and on july 20th 1993 uh, his uh body was found in a park uh across the uh river from the white house in virginia uh, he died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound i believe it was through the mouth um so they took his body and however his death didn't stop there you know his his death was the biggest death uh in politics since the john f kennedy assassination and a lot of people were wondering gee isn't that funny how a guy that was under so much scrutiny with with the travel gate uh, with uh, the hiring and firing of certain appointees, the, the siege in Waco 
was making this guy look bad. And, you know, this guy, Mr. Foster here, was not built for that, you know, Washington lifestyle. Uh, later on, about four days after uh, he was found dead, uh, people were searching his briefcase, which had been searched before, but this time they found a bunch of crumbled up pieces of paper and they put the paper together and it was Vince Foster's suicide note. Uh, I want to read part of the suicide note. Uh, quote, I made mistakes from ignorance, inexperience and overwork. I did not knowingly violate any law or standard of conduct. No one in the White House did not knowingly violate any law or standard of conduct. I was not meant for the job or the spotlight of public life in Washington. Here, ruining people can be considered sport. But there is several people out there that say that this man didn't commit suicide. Uh, it was more like a, quote, Arkansas, unquote. An Arkansas is a term that conspiracy theorists used to refer to people who mysteriously end up dead uh, around uh, the Clintons, uh, people close to the Clintons, uh, people that have uh, possible dirt on the Clintons. And it's just, there's been a couple of people where it's just, uh, their deaths were considered somewhat suspicious. Now this guy, he, according to uh, friends, uh, very, very depressed, did not like the Washington life, as you read in his note, uh, just again, was not built for that. Uh, he missed his family back here in Arkansas. Uh, it's been investigated for, through many years. Um, the medical examiner's office uh, concluded that it was a suicide. But, you know, when you took that suicide letter and taped it together, uh, you had several different handwriting analysis uh, people, persons, uh, that feel that Vince Foster did not write that letter. They felt that um, possibly somebody else wrote it you know, wrote it for him, so to speak. And uh, there's been uh, several discrepancies in the way the letter was written. Uh, certain letters that, you know, when you show his original handwriting and then the handwriting of the suicide note uh, show that um, possibly he did not write it. However, my personal opinion is if you are serious about taking your own life, I'm pretty sure you're not going to be your normal self. You're going to be very nervous in writing that note. That's just my personal opinion about that. But anyways, uh, this man took his life. Um, he was uh, dragged through the mud uh, during the uh, first six months of the Clinton administration. And, uh, you know, he was very close uh, with the Clintons. Uh, he, he worked for the same uh, law firm, in Little Rock as uh, Hillary Clinton did uh, back in the day when they lived out here in Arkansas before they got into politics. And uh, I'll just end with this, say politics, as you can see, is a very, very dangerous game. Like he said, ruining people's lives is considered sport. And I'll always remember that statement. And as you can see, our political uh, structure is so toxic that uh, a man or a woman who means best for the country, who means best for the people, can be continuously slandered through an evil 24-hour news machine bent on bringing down somebody for absolutely no reason. Whether you are the president of the United States, a senator from a state, a congressman, an alderman, a mayor, whatever the case might be, today's, today's, you know, legacy media, today's corporate media, they're not news persons, they're activists. There is no more news, it's just activism on both sides. It's up to you out there watching, it's up to you whether you choose to believe everything that is brought forth to you or you believe to think for yourself. The choice is yours. 
Brook, you may be gone from earth, but your spirit will always remain in our hearts. You accomplished some amazing things in your 14 years. From making memories in the deer woods to shining bright on stage, you always made us proud. You were smart, loving, and gorgeous on the inside and out. Your smile would light up a room and your kind heart touched so many. Your life was a blessing and testimony to others. You loved your family, but most of all, you loved God. You were everything a daughter should be. The best sister, a granddaughter, a niece, a cousin, but most of all, a friend to everyone. Although your time on earth was too short, we know we will meet again in our heavenly home. We love and miss you, sweetheart. Love, Dad, Mom, Chelsea, and Hunter. Okay, guys, I am out of here. Sorry for the short video. The landscapers are making their way over to my side of the cemetery. So I'm going to get out of here because it's going to get loud here in a little bit. I promise the next video will be longer. Anyways, live but not live, but still alive. By the grace of God, I am Lamont at large. I will catch up with you on the next vlog. God bless and peace out.